What is going on today guys? This is Tony from Team Divine Pro here coming at you guys with a new video. I know that there haven't been a lot of videos in lately, but everybody's been busy and uh yeah, but we are getting back to making more videos cuz uh new stuff is coming out and uh you know, Vanguard's getting G generation and uh Waste is getting more sets and stuff that we can actually will be getting. So yeah. But anyways, to bring start back things back, um, I think I'm going to bring back another deck uh, Guilty Crown because I have revamped it and also I got sleeves for it. As you, I don't know if I sleeved these last time in the last video. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. But yeah, I'll also be doing a video on sleeves and the such and all that good stuff. Because um, at some point I'm assuming you guys would probably want to know what type of sleeves I use since I do get a lot of them. And yeah, but yeah, so I'll go into that. And there's a big glare. Let me just push this to the side and that should help a bit. So, let's get on to the deck. This is just for um, old time's sake and the fact that to restart the fact that I'm going to upload some more videos from time to time. Like, not time to time, but more now. So, yeah. So, level threes, we have eight still. So, you're in four. Uh, Inori's your basic uh, changer. So, there's a reason why I would run four. It's also because I don't have another one of a certain card, but I would still run four over anyways. One of her, so she's a new addition um, to the deck, so her ability is that, she's a TD one card, but her ability is that um, when she is called, you can, one second, when she is called, you can uh, search your, you can salvage one card from drop zone, it's like character, if I'm correct, and she gains 2,000, uh, so she's 11.5. She's there mainly for power, but she's also there for other stuff. Like, she's there for the salvage ability, but it's not mainly for the salvage ability since we have other cards that can do it. But the salvage is a, a boost, a bonus, but the 11.5 is really the main reason why we have her in here. And then we play three of the shoes that have the ability to rest two, and then we'll pay two, um, what's it again? Pay one stock, and then rest two, and then check if it's a level one or higher, then it can, he can, um, when he attacks and uh, reverses the opponent's person, he can send it to clock. So, yeah. So, so, in reality, if I did have another one of these, which I could have had, but I found I didn't need, I could switch this out for that. So, eight, four, four each. But I found that this is per working out perfectly fine because you do still want to have a really big body. Because this deck isn't as powerful as it used to be, but although it still is very powerful. Um, level 2's, I did cut it down from eight, uh, 7 to 4, because you'll see why later, but in, but it's working out perfectly fine. So I play only 2 changers now, because I noticed that 3 changers clogs a lot, and this card's only good for later when you have this card in the drop zone, which is why you run 4 of it, but it's also because... You don't actually need it as much because most of the time, if anything, you're gonna be your your back row will be filled because of cards that you use to support. So you don't have any room for it to be like just the rest and then give power. So I would rather play other cards over this in that sense. And changers are only good to a certain extent. Uh, play one Sigumi. There's a reason why I only run one now, but it's still I have ten blues in the deck, so the ratio is twenty three. Um, 23 green, 16 red, I believe, 10 blue, and then it's something around those lines. I don't exactly know, I don't know exactly the numbers, but it's something around that. And then we run one red blocker because everybody seems to want the green blocker, but the reason is that there's more green cards in the deck than there are for red blockers. So it's more viable to up your red ratio by putting this card rather than the green counter, which has the same ability. But also might just be a preference of art. I really just prefer it for the sake of ratios, and I'm not as caring of the art. But yeah, for those, moving on to level ones, we upped it from the original. I think eleven. I did uh, twelve. I believe I upped it up to fourteen, and there's reasoning there. You'll see soon. So we run four of these. Whoops, four of these. One. SR shout out to Scruffy for passing it to me. Thanks, bud. Um, four of Inori, the climax combo person. So, yeah, really good. Not much else to say. Three of the girl with glasses. I did make an error last time 
when you pay her stock, the effect is continuous until your next turn. So that means that if I do her ability, then she's going to be at 8 for until the end of your opponent's turn, which is really powerful. But you only need 3 because she is kind of weak. Although you could easily run more. but So yeah, another boost is that I ran I run 4 of these Hares now. So um, she, her ability, uh, as I, it was corrected by a member of Team Climax Combo, shout out to them I guess, in, the, in a sense, the, is that her ability only activates during the main phase, so on the turn you call her, you can't activate the ability to check the top card of the deck and switch it on top or bottom. You can only do that afterwards on the next turn. So that's something I figured out, but I used to run three. I run four now just because of the fact that, oh, it's not focusing. There we go. It's just because of the fact that I don't see it enough and I end up ha I end up with one usually early game, one empty side of the f board, like right, right over here. Whereas if I have four now, I can fill up these two spots in the back to support rather than have one empty and then have to rely on something else. But another combo is that if you don't draw two, you can always put this card in the back so that you have the ability to give 2k. It's just that it's preferable to have this and bumping this card up to one more removed one other Sugumi because the Sugumi, if I had two full on board already, I wouldn't really be ending up calling the Sugumi just because of the fact that this card is as equally as good and it doesn't rely on you having to call stuff from your hand. And then finally, whoops, I forgot. One second. That was out of view. And then finally, rerun three blockers. Shout out to Scruffy for passing me two hollow ones. Thanks, thanks again. And yeah, so we run three blockers now because things are hitting for higher numbers now and you need to get more protection in to block all those attacks and it's just in general a better card because the deck does salvage a bit more now and you'll see why in a bit. But yeah, now nowadays blocking is very nece necessary and usually end up having enough um, stock to pay this off, which is really helpful. And finally, we run 15 grade zero. So there hasn't been much of a change. So it's four of the fork issues. Not pretty standard, really good beater. One uh, brainstormer, because you do still need a brainstorm because you want to refresh as soon as you possibly can sometimes. Three suiciders. Some people like to play four. I still find that only three is necessary because it only has a, a primary skill and doesn't have a secondary skill as all as a, a lot of the new ones do. So it's just basically a vanilla suicider. So you only need really three. I haven't found the need. Two Sugumi searchers. I bumped this down from bumped bumped that down from three to two because of the fact that you have three and you always end up drawing the third one dead early on. So I only want to see this later after turn one or so, so that I can draw into more of my other primary level zeros. So to replace one of those and then another card, I ran two of these cards. So this one is another Sugumi. So my that puts my blue count to still 10. So it's a 15k, but when it attacks, when it's called, you can check the top card of your deck. If it's a level one or higher, you can discard one card and add it to your hand if you choose. So it, it, it gives you either the benefit of adding a card to your hand and fixing correcting hands or setting up plays where you can drop this card and then go for a change or anything or it's also just there to so that you know what's on the top of your deck because this deck does revolve around knowing what's on the top of the deck because you i.e. him and the uh, girl that has glasses if I can find her yeah go glasses so that helps a lot even though you won't get the plus off of it you still have the knowledge which in its in its own right is a plus but also another ability is that when it attacks it can give it can give plus 5k to something i mean not 5k but 500 <coughs> oh excuse me so yeah th two of her she, she's been working out pretty fine like pretty well uh just two of her is more than enough i find though because later on in the game you don't want to be seeing her as much like she's a good suicider but Still, you don't want to have to call such a weak thing out and know that it's gonna you're going to have an open spot on board later. And then we run three of these cards. These are the other card that you can put in for the Hare behind if you don't have it. Like, say you put it here and then you have the Hare over here. Uh, or you can have a Sugumi, let's say. 
let's say you end up drawing the Skumi, so you put like Skumi behind there, so then you have two blue boosters, and technically it's like a defensive card at the same time. But in general, it's just more for there for the later games when you are being sniped in the back row, or when you just need extra boost, because sometimes a really good play early game early on is that you call this and then you call that if you've gone sec if you're going second and you just attack for one of your opponents keeping them at low level but also at the same time pushing this to 5 uh 5 5 so then it's practically impossible from the for them to kill it without a suicider or a uh, climax which is really good because then you're forcing more resources and then you're hot, or you could be leveling up quicker so yeah uh. And then finally, we got one more thing. Oh gosh. We got for events. I only, I still only run one Truth of the Void genome. It does like whenever I draw it, I end up seeing it really dead. Like the stock, I could like I have the stock for it. It's just that I would rather do it for other things because when you have this card, I find that whenever I do, I play it. But the issue is that when I pl if I were to play it. The stuff in drop zone, like, um, what am I saying, drop zone, waiting area, waiting room would not be as effective as the cards I have in hand, as in saying I wouldn't have enough stock to pay everything out. So in certain situations, it's really helpful to get block cards and everything, but I still find that only one is enough because it's a very situational card depending on your amount of stock, and I find that the deck can operate without it perfectly fine now. It's really just a matter, I have it in there for those situations. And then for Climax Combos for Inori, for the Inori, so I'll just pull her out in case you guys don't remember. For her, 2k1, pretty standard, pretty powerful Climax Combo if you don't, if you don't mind me saying. Um, two gates, this is a, this is somewhat of a change. I only play two because the deck does salvage a bit more because of the next Card that I will show you, and it doesn't need as much protection. So this is a. Um, let me see. I don't even know how to read Japanese. So if I'm correct, it's put the top card. Um, yes, put the top card of your deck into weighted into stock, and then what happens is that you will have to uh, you get all your things in the front get plus one soul so it's it's basically giving you a i think it's plus one soul yeah plus one soul so it's basically saying that you have two soul everything has two souls total and it has two triggers which is really the main point as to why apart from the fact that it's a climax combo the main point as to why i run the card because i was noticing that whenever i wanted to side attack i would have to rely on this and always end up getting that but this way I'm increasing the odds of drawing a just one pass damage rather than having a salvage because that might that was sometimes the cause of me losing because I wouldn't have the extra one damage needed to win the entire game. So that's it. But it's also a climax combo, which is why I run this card because, well, run it at four because it's a great climax combo. Um, I didn't run it, run it originally, be but now playing the deck a little bit more, I figured out that you do kind of need it. But that's just based upon my testing. So the ability is that when it's active, when it attacks, you can pay one, and then you pay one stock, I believe. It's either stock or discard one card. I think it's it's pay one stock. Uh, sorry, pay one, pay one uh, stock, and then you gain plus one thousand, so eleven k. And then on top of that, you get to retrieve two cards from the waiting room. So it's a salvage, sorry, salvage, two cards from the waiting room. So it gives you two cards and it gives you an extra 1,000 plus it gives you one soul because of her effect. So you have an extra, you have stock because the stock from this cancels out the ability from that. So it's basically a free plus two for hand and then plus one for uh, power and another soul for soul if you consider that. So it's like three and a half or two and a half and however you see it. But that's basically why I run it now, because that gives you the option of having it. And now I know that Truth of the Void Genome is a bit earlier, but because you can do the changer as the same amount, it's practically the same thing. It's practically the same thing, and it, this gives you a heal. So, I don't know. I feel that this is good 
this is a bit better. But it's you do need this card, which is why I run it at two, and you still have this because it's sometimes better to have a gate active. Like that's why I run this. But this is it. Like hand advantage is a big thing, which is why I still keep the draws in there. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it, guys. So um, thanks, thanks for uh, subscribe. Um, to any of you, those of you guys who re are requesting any type of video, just please uh, PM us or co uh, comment down on this video or anything if you want to see any particular deck profile or anything, because we will be happy to try to push it out and get content out to you guys because we have been lacking a bit, but we realize that and there is going to be a lot of stuff coming out soon, hopefully, because I have to, we are just getting a little bit busy with the stuff. So yeah, but um, that aside, new videos are coming out at some point, and just please stay tuned, uh, subscribe if you have not, uh, like if this video if you enjoyed it, and uh, comment or do whatever you guys like. Um, apart from that, I think the next thing I'll be doing is Cardfight Vanguard, because I did just get these in the mail. And if you know what these are, then congrats, if you don't, then... You can check out in the next video. Now, I'm not saying that I'll be op I'll be doing a deck profile of this clan, but I will be doing at some point, hopefully in the future. I guess not the next video. I guess because I can't. But at some point, there will be something relevant to this deck on this channel, so that at least shows that you got Vanguard people will have something to watch. Anyways, guys, I've been rambling on for too long. This has been Tony from Team Divine Pro signing off. Bye.